What up, people? Welcome to the Doing Everything Different podcast. I'm your host, Devin Lars. And today's episode is going to be a little bit different. Uh, I started a Instagram broadcast channel on my page. Um, it was a new feature that I was playing around with and wanted to uh, be able to set up and create kind of like a discussion around stuff of kind of documenting my day to day and kind of what I'm working on and try to be able to bring value to this space. Um, and thinking about how to build kind of community and things of that nature. And so I did a poll of just asking, um, you know, how can I start or help you grow your business? And so we got several questions uh, that I wanted to read through. And so if you are a part of the broadcast channel, I know I'm a little late with recording this. It's been busy, but I appreciate your uh, patience on it. And so I'm going to just go through and, and read some of these questions and then uh, and answer them to the best of my ability, provide any resources that I can or, or suggestions. So the first question is, any suggestions on how to find and ask someone to be your mentor? I think this is a really, really good question. And it's something that I actually get often. And I would say that when you're looking to find a mentor, when you're looking at someone that is in a position that you want to be in, um, and chances are they're going to be successful at whatever it is that they're trying to do, especially if it's in a, uh, a business standpoint or career profession standpoint, these people are going to be busy, right? And they are going to have a lot of things on their plate and they are going to have a lot of commitments. And so a lot of people, you know, will want to reach out and ask them for mentorship, ask them for support, ask them for guidance. And the way that I've seen a lot of people that operate at a high level kind of filter it out is, are you going to just waste my time? Or is this information going to be something that, um, something that you're actually going to take and, and use? And so I think from my perspective of what I've seen at work and, it, and honestly, what I've seen at work that has been something that stands out is so many people will you know, several people have reached out to me and asking to, you know, for me to mentor them or for me to, you know, speak with them or whatever. And I think what's interesting is that a lot of times they don't follow up with either I say, email me, shoot me an email and do this. Or sometimes if I get busy or whatever, I, I might not respond in a certain amount of time because I'm just, I, I forgot or, I, or something happened. And so what I've found is you have to show the person that you actually want this and you're actually going to do something with the information. So I think that from a standpoint of what I've seen that works is really being mindful of like how you strategically ask for mentorship and how you show them that like, okay, I'm not going to waste your time and I'm going to take this information and actually do something with it. And so the best thing that I could say in terms of advice for finding a mentor is you have to stand out and be different. You have to be able to show why this person is going to take time from their demanding busy schedule to be able to mentor you or to be able to, you know, provide you with information and resources. And now not everybody's going to do it, right? Some people are just going to be busy. Some people it's just not going to work, but I think being able to be consistent and persistent is, is, is going to be the key to it. And then also how can you bring value to that person that you want to uh, get mentorship from, right? Is it, can I do free services for you? Can I, you know, help you with something? Can I um, be proactive and, you know, make your life easier in some way to be able to make sure that it's, it's um, reciprocal, right? So it's not just like they're just giving to you, but you're able to, you know, help as well. A lot of the times people won't even take you up on that offer, but just the initiative to say that you were going to do it is going to show them a lot. Like, okay, this person actually really wants it. Uh, and so I think it's just, it's just really just a matter of reaching out. You know, I had, um, a couple people reach out to me recently and I had one, um, I had one, one young brother that reached out to me like two weeks ago and he, he reached out to me on Instagram and he was like, Hey, look, I, I saw one of your videos of how you got a partnership with Nike. And I just want to kind of pick your brain. He's 22, um, in school for his, his master's. And so I was like, yeah, shoot me an email. And then he shot me an email, sent all the stuff. I sent him my calendar link. And then I had a meeting come up that I had to go on. That was emergency meeting that I had to get on. And so I had to cancel. And I was like, hey, can we, you know, push this back to tomorrow at this time? And he was super flexible. He was like, yeah, for sure, 100%. And so then when we got on the Zoom, 
he was super prepared, like wrote all his notes, what he wanted to accomplish from the call, introduced himself, was very, very, very detailed in what he was like looking for. Just like, hey, man, I just I, I have some questions about this. This is who I am. And, and it was just it was very he's going to be super successful. He just turned 23. And I could just tell with his mindset and where he's at, he's going to be extremely successful. So I think being able to just again, know what you want, go in with it in the mindset of, okay, how can I ask for what I need, but then also provide value as well. Uh, and, and especially for young folks, right, that are just getting started, that youth, a lot of people want to, especially people that are in positions of success and have some years under them. A lot of the times you'll, you'll be surprised to find out that most of those people, like they, if they've accomplished the success, they want to give back and they want, they like, that's where their focus is because they've gotten all the material stuff or the success and they want to be able to give back to the next generation and share the things that they've learned. So I think it's just a matter of just asking, right? You just, you, you, you guarantee to miss every shot you don't take. And so it can't hurt anything, but like I said, make sure to provide value, make sure not to waste the person's time and make sure that you're going to actually do something with the information because people can tell if you're, going to do something with their information or if you're just wasting their time. So even if you do get on a call with them, they could get a sense of like, oh, okay, this, this person isn't going to do nothing with what I'm saying. So take that in mind as you start to, you know, as you start to, to build that up. Okay. So, um, this is one, how do I check if a business name is already used? This one is pretty simple. You can go to the uspto.gov and do a quick search. You can do a, a Google search. You can do Instagram search. I'm not an attorney, so this is not legal advice. You can get an IP attorney to be able to help you with all the stuff to be able to find it out. Or you could even just do something like LegalZoom, right? Like go to LegalZoom uh, and you can hire an IP attorney to be able to find out, you know, if, if everything is trademarked and stuff like that. It's a super simple process um, with social media, especially now that you can do all of your research and everything like that. So I would suggest just Googling it. You can go to LegalZoom if that is something that you want to um, uh, find out. Uh, the next one, this one is, is brand focused. So where can I get the best quality clothing at a good price? So I'm assuming you, you're talking about like wholesale garments, blank garments. So as you're starting to think about merchandise and you're starting to think about, you know, launching products, building your brand, different things of that nature, you can find a lot of wholesale garments out there. I mean, nowadays there's so many different vendors out there that, um, have like high quality, good products to be able to purchase from. So even just going on TikTok actually is a really good resource. I've been finding a lot of information, sourcing, direct sourcing, manufacturer connects and everything like that on TikTok. So if you go on there and search hashtag like wholesale garments or, you know, streetwear, wholesale blanks or whatever it is on, on TikTok, you're going to find a lot of videos of them kind of walking through the process and, and showing where to get the wholesale accounts. You have domestic stuff where you can order domestically that just, you know, you order from warehouses that stock all of the stuff and then you just buy the blanks and they ship it to you. Or you can go overseas and get things done custom. Some have lower, higher minimums depending on what it is and depending on where you are, where you are in your process and your journey. Um, but those are two options that you can do. But TikTok, honestly, I've been finding some like really good resources and contacts and manufacturers on there that I was actually surprised. Um, that they were shown on there with contact information and stuff too. So you can find a lot of, um, a lot of the stuff on there. Okay. Another one says, Hey, Devin, long time, uh, a plan or structure for creativity in cut and sew. So this is something that is a really interesting topic when it comes to cut and sew and the, the intricacies of doing production and all that stuff. I actually am going to, get some people and some experts that have been in the space and have like real full developed clothing brands and, and some intricate pieces and different things of that nature that has experience with production on the podcast. So I'm going to be able to get them on the show, kind of interview them and talk to them about their process and how they've done it and how they like plan for scheduling and plan for production and all of this stuff. And so it's going to be exciting. So I'll, I'll be able to have more details for that when it comes to um, the cut and sew and how to structure and set that up. Another thing is another question. How do I grow authentically on Instagram and in person with community? There's several ways of my take of, of how to do it. I think this 
for example, what I'm doing with this podcast. I think that that's one to be able to build connections and build relationships with folks and to be able to kind of like create a, 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 a movement and create a community around something that you create and content that you create. So this in real time is something that I've been able to use this podcast as a business relationship tool so you can be able to grow and to be able to do that. And I think just storytelling, right? Being authentic and vulnerable about what you're doing. Instagram is going to be hard because their organic reach is just crazy. I mean, I'm sure everybody has experienced it. Like you post something and you're getting like two likes and four people are unfollowing you. So it just, it doesn't make sense. Their algorithm and they're, I think they're struggling and trying to figure it out of like their programming and stuff like that. But TikTok is another way. YouTube is another way, you know, something that's kind of interesting that some people aren't um, talking about is um, email list. I know it sounds like ancient and it sounds old and, you know, like people aren't uh, thinking about email lists, but email lists are, are, are more important than ever now because you have these platforms like, again, like Instagram, that's basically just killing your organic reach. So you can't reach anybody. So having your own email list is kind of like having your own platform, right? Your own social platform. Like, you know, if somebody signs up for your email address and as long as their email address is good and everything, it's going to go to their inbox. They're going to see it, whether they open it or not, that's on them, but you know that they're going to see it versus on Instagram, TikTok, whatever it is. If you post a piece of content, you don't know who the hell is going to see it, you know, because of the algorithm and how it's going to showcase and do all that. And you know, say if Instagram wants to remove your account or ban you or put a block on it or freeze your account, whatever, all of your community, everybody that you have there is gone and you can't access them. So to be able to set up an email, uh, a newsletter subscription, some sort of email marketing campaign is going to be really important. And that's something that we're trying to build out now too, because we really see the benefit, you know, the benefits in having an email list and the conversions and stuff of, you know, things that we're doing for our clients. And so, yeah, so I think that that's a really great way to be able to set that up. And another question that I got, I can't go through all these, but another question that I got is a, a lot was around marketing. <sighs> there are some incredible ways in 2024 to be able to set up your marketing and your business. I, I think, again, content is going to be a big thing. This podcast is is a tool to not only be able to create content and to um, kind of showcase what we're doing, but then also to have these really dope conversations with people and as a business development tool, right? These are essentially meetings that I'm having with people to be able to have these conversations and building these relationships and rapport. And so I think it's like a win-win situation when it comes to marketing, branding, creating content. Um, the structure of how we record this podcast, I think is, is very important of like how people could take ideas from this is essentially like we come on and record a 45 minute podcast. We upload the audio on all of the audio platforms. We upload the full video on YouTube and then we chop all these different important clips and then we have it for micro content. So we have it for TikTok, we have it for YouTube shorts, we have it for Instagram, we have it for LinkedIn, we have it for all these different places. And so I think it's something that in 45 minutes in a 45 minute conversation or whatever, you can create 20, 30, 40 pieces of content you know, you can write blog posts from it. There's a lot of different things that you can do it. So I think just getting strategic about how you go about marketing and, and growing and, and looking at what's working and how to do kind of more with less, um, but still being able to give the authenticity and bring it your full content and your full um, perspective on it is going to be really important. Then you have stuff like paid ads. I mean, paid ads, I think is always going to be... Um, Paid ads is always going to be something that is going to be here to stay. I think it's going to change on different platforms, but it's really hard to be a really good targeted Instagram paid ad. I mean, Instagram, if you guys don't, if you guys haven't ran for your businesses, Instagram and Facebook paid advertising, you're missing out on a lot of opportunity. It's not as good as it used to be back in the day. It used to be way better, but because you, you have so many brands and so much money coming into the system now, it's a supply and demand issue. But Instagram ads, if you're trying to do something and trying to get, whether it's a clothing brand, whether it's your product, whether it's your service, whether it's a new song, whether it's selling real estate, whether it's an agency, whatever it is, if you understand your demographic and you understand your targeting 
and you create good creative for your targeting, Facebook and Instagram track everything that you do, not as much as it used to because they banned some of the tracking stuff, but they know what you're doing and your, what your interests are and who you follow. So I call it, it's like this thing that I call digital fishing, essentially. So if you want to go fishing, right, and you want to find, you want to catch catfish, right, you're going to have to figure out where they live and where they're at. So the targeting, finding out where catfish live, finding out where your customers live and where they are is basically the targeting. Okay, what is your target market interested in? What do they like? What pages do they follow? What interests are they in? What buying habits do they have? Do they live in a specific area? You could do all this stuff and plan it out with Facebook ads to be able to do it. And then, okay, cool. You've identified the targeting of where your ideal customer is right? Okay, we found out which lake and what spot of the lake these, you know, the catfish swim at. And then it's about the creative. So the creative is the bait of what you go down there to to be able to bait with the the ideal fish that you want to catch. And so the bait is the creative. And so that essentially is like, how do you create something that's really, really engaging and really good for the audience that you're going after? And so then on your feed, it's like casting a net out on there. Every time somebody's scrolling on the feed, you see the bait on there. And if somebody's interested in it, they'll click on it, you get a bite. And I think it's just, it's, a, it's such a powerful tool that people don't understand how powerful it is and how to do it right. Some people have like boosted posts, like where you just go on your Instagram and just click boost and then put, you know, five, $10 in it. But that just spreads it everywhere. That doesn't like get very targeted. You have to go into your business as manager to be able to get specific targeting. So you can find your exact audience, what they're interested in, go super detailed in depth of what you're trying to do and where your audience is, and then create the creative to be able to set it out. And then it shoots it out. And I'm telling you, the results that you'll get from it in terms of the responses and, and just the eyeballs on the stuff of your audience, it, and you, and you could do it with something cheap. You can do it with like $10 a day, $20 a day, $50 a day, $5 a day if you wanted to do it. $100 a week, however you want to structure it, you can set it up. That's the cool thing about Facebook and Instagram is because you set the budget of where you want it to go and, and how much you want to spend. So say, you know, you start with $5 a day and then you start seeing some results or whatever, move it up to $10 a day, $5 to be real honest with you, you're not going to get a lot of results for it. I would say minimum 25, 50, realistically, it was probably going to be a good way to start because you'll like really get some information from it. Um, not to say that it won't work with a smaller budget, but I, ideally, at, at least $25, $50. Um, a lot of our clients, we're testing out bigger budgets where we'll start with, you know, $500 a day or $1,000 a day and then test it out to see what people respond to. And then we're able to kind of like make all these things, but we've done it with smaller budgets as well. And so if you're able to do that and test it out, it just it's a cycle that's just going to be crazy because not only are you going to have brand awareness, so it's like a commercial, but they can also click on it and act on this stuff, whether they're giving your email or purchasing your product, but then it also generates followers as well. So it's, it's, it's like a win-win situation. There's so many advantages of running paid advertising. It can, it can really completely change your perspective on all that stuff. I think organically, that's where the organic stuff comes in, right? Like you do pay to get awareness. Now you get new people into your funnel. Now you have organic content to keep them kind of engaged. And then every so often you'll have organic pieces of content that go viral. That gets you a little bit more followers and viral could be, you know, you're normally getting a hundred views. And now you get 500 views on one and you get one follower from it. Like it's all relative and it's all in perspective. And as you just start to grow the process, it doesn't really change. It just, it kind of evolves and gets bigger as you start to set it up. So Paid advertising is a, a thousand percent something I would look into. Um, and I would I would highly recommend to um if you're not running paid ads, at least you know, try to uh to set it up and to um and to do it from there. Mm -hmm. And so yeah, so I'm gonna I'm gonna probably have to make a part two because there's a bunch of, of questions here um that I'm gonna go through. But hopefully this was helpful in some way if you're trying to start or or build or grow. If you want to um be in the channel. It's on my personal Instagram page. So Devin Lars, um, you can follow me there. And I think it's on my page. I, I'm still, I just set it up. So I'm not sure how you like join it. Um, but I'm sure that you can go to my page and click channels and join it as free. And you just set it up. And it's, it's something that I'm going to just start, I'm going to start being more active in it and start posting. 
um, and just trying to figure out, you know, what's going to be valuable in terms of, of content and stuff like that. So yeah, I hope you guys all are well. I'm enjoying this process. I'm excited to bring you all some amazing guests. We have some heavy hitters coming that just confirmed that I think you guys are going to really get value from uh, for the show. And so I know this episode was a little different, but we're just going to be testing out, trying formats, seeing what people like and what's valuable to uh, to people. So, yep, hope you guys are well, and I will talk to you on a minute. Peace.